Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And if you just purchased a 2024 Volkswagen ID4, or maybe a little bit newer one if you're watching this after the fact, or maybe you're just testing one out, this video is for you. We're gonna show you how to use the 12.9 inch infotainment screen. We're gonna show you how to pair up a phone, use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We're gonna test out the voice commands and try to answer any questions you might have. Now, if you do want to see more on the car, check the link below. We've got a dedicated review of the seven speaker sound system. We're going to be doing a full review. I don't think we're going to do a range test on this model, but we have range test some range tested some previous ID4s, so feel free to find that below as well. So, oh my gosh, the, all right, a little bit of a sneak peek here. We've got a wake word that has come awake on me a few times here and not super convenient. But in front of you, you see a pretty straightforward gauge cluster screen. Really not too much to tell you other than that it tells you your digital speed, speed limit, your cruise control, your charge percentage, as well as a mileage and the gear that you're in, maybe some information there about seat belts. I actually really like how straightforward this is. You don't need any fancy power meter. It tells you both your percentage of battery and your distance to empty, your kind of mileage there estimated. Just a nice, easy to read digital speed readout. The resolution's nice. This is a very good compromise I see to uh, having a simple, clean layout, but still giving you something to see right in front of you. No sort of head-up display, so let's move right on into the center screen. This is an updated system for the Volkswagen ID4, and as I understand, not all models are getting it. Some of the more basic ID4s are sticking with the 12-inch screen. Now, I don't know for sure if that's running the previous operating system, that version, or if it's this version on the smaller screen. I think it's the older version of the operating system, though. But this one, if we come to the home screen, this is kind of what you're going to see, your basic home screen here. You've got some persistent buttons up on the top for various functionality of the system. This is essentially an app screen, if you will. We'll get back to that here in a moment. You've got the outside temperature, a quick toggle to your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, and some information over here on the right, such as time and signal strength for the phone. And then along the bottom, you have some persistent climate controls, heated and ventilated seats, and temperature. To bring up the full climate control screen, you click Clima, and then you can see all of your controls for the climate. You can also just change the temperature right here with these controls, and then right here in the center, you've got volume and a little on and off button for turning the media on and off. On this home screen, you're seeing about two thirds of it on the left taken up by the navigation and then on the right looks like some smart kind of uh, things you might want to click right away kind of uh, quick toggles if you will and then some media controls and information about charging let's get back to this home screen you can always get back home with that home button if we slide to the right we see some more tiles that give us information looks like we've got phone vehicle status and uh, some tips and tricks and you can customize the tiles on the home screen by, let's see, right here, the layout, you can move things around. And there's, there's a, we're not gonna go into every single little detail and how to on the system, this is more a general overview and then it'll get you to the proper screens to be able to spend more time playing around with them. But man, there is a lot going on here. And this is, this is one of my first interactions with the system as well. So I'm learning it too. Display area. Operating menu. Okay, this is telling you the things I just told you. Operation, zoom in and out. Yeah, that's that's we're familiar with how to do that. Customization. Customize the tiles on the home screen. Do this. Press and hold the tile. List of various functions, and then a function. Select a function to be displayed. Menu sorting order. Arrange the functions. All right, so that's on the main kind of menu deal. So if we go home, and we want this one. We can customize it right here. Then this comes up and you can choose the different things. Maybe I wanted uh, sound adjustments to be right there. And I can then have that on the main screen. I can click that. It's bringing me right to my sound settings. One thing I do appreciate about the screen is how quickly it responds to, to inputs. There's not really that micro lag that you get with a lot of screens on the market these days. Okay, so you can even swap out what's on this big center area screen as well. So say, for example, on this one, press and hold. If I wanted that one to be driving data, and there you go, it's driving data. So you really ought to spend time like this, play around with the car and, and customize it, set up the main screens for what you're gonna be using most often. Let's go on along this top menu here. We see a vehicle quick toggle screen. So little uh, commands or, or functionality that you might wanna to get to quickly like 
opening the roof? Really? Roof setting. Oh, you can close close the sunshade from there. That's interesting. I didn't know you could do that from the infotainment system. Go in back and change your drive modes, light settings, etc. In the parking screen, right here, that should yep give you the park assist or the ability to bring your rear facing camera up. Some of the higher end models might have a 360 cam. In the assist screen, this is an easy way to turn on or off your different driver assistant functionality. Up here, that's quick toggle for your drive modes, eco, eco custom, sport, and comfort. Coming back home, then we've got a kind of charging and battery information screen. Optimize certain things. Then coming back home, you can actually swipe down right here to get to a quick toggle screen. They should be able to access from pretty much any menu that gives you the ability to change the brightness of the screen, especially at night. You can change between the bright and dark theme. So now we're on the bright theme. It'll look a little different. You can adjust things like your sound settings, navigate to your last destination. Volkswagen's really trying to give you a smart system here. And, and for some people, that's going to be frustrating to use if you don't really get comfortable with it and figure out a way to make it work best for you and for your lifestyle. But the more comfortable you are with it, the more you're going to like it. So let's bring up all of our apps now. If we go to telephone, you can see any sort of functionality that you might be able to, might want to do. If you sync your contacts, you can get those there. Make calls, dial in a number, etc. Going back, let's go to radio and media. Radio and media. You can see, go to radio. If I want to go, let's see what's been last listened to. Oh no, listening history. All right, news channel, um, news and public radio. Let's go CNBC. And if we back that out, does that actually give us kind of a now playing screen player? Yeah, there you go. Now you can see your Sirius XM. You can pause, go back, change channel, etc. Get right back to live and favorite the channel. Coming back home, let's go to navigation. You can see your big map. Taking up a decent amount of the screen. You can move around, pinch to zoom fairly easily, change which direction you're looking at the map. Come on. Should be able to. I don't know why that's not working right now strange. There we go. I guess it just didn't want to be zoomed out or zoomed in. And you can put in destinations. We'll do a little bit more of that when we use the voice commands later. Under the vehicle screen, we can you get it sort of broken up between interior and exterior. So you can adjust functionality for the exterior lights, how long you want them to stay on, little animations, etc. We can take a look at our tires, see what our tire pressure uh, are set at. Adjust those if you got winter tires on here and you want a speed warning for not going too fast on them, you can set that there. Headlights, got the dynamic cornering lights, so as you turn, you get a little bit of extra lighting on there. Mirrors, do you want them to drop down and, and, and look down at the curb as you're in reverse? You can do that. For interior, if we go to cockpit, this gives us um, the ability to reset the driving data every time we start the vehicle or at different intervals. ID lights, this is your interior ambient lighting, you can adjust the brightness on that. You can see it moving around up there as well as uh, the basic functionality. So the, the ID light is actually this light right here in front. Again, let me adjust the brightness and you can see it right there. It'll do things like when you're charging, it'll shine a light and show you how much you're charging. Uh, if you get an error or something's wrong with your vehicle, it'll pulse at you for navigation. You can have it light up for a turn. Uh, driving and maneuvering it tells you to take over the steering when you got the pilot assist going. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a neat functionality there. Interior light. This is the ability to dim or brighten the lights because on this ID4 for 2024, we've got some backlighting for the volume and climate controls. Under seats, easy entry. Do you want the seat to move backward as you get in and out of it and turn on or off the vehicle? And roof. Again, that ability to open or close the roof from there. Then on the same vehicle screen, we can see some status information. This is where, no, it's still not letting us actually see our tire pressures. It's just giving us a thumbs up, showing us our odometer and the tripometer there, as well as telling us we're good on service for now. The ability to put your wipers in service position. That's important if you want to change your wipers out yourself. Down under data, we can see how efficient we've been driving since the start, since uh, it's been reset, or since we last charged the vehicle. Pretty nice and straightforward there. Coming back to the app screen, we'll skip over Android Auto for now. We saw parking and charging. 
Auxiliary climate, this is gonna be if you want the climate control to stay on after you get out of the vehicle, or if you want it to turn on at a certain time. I actually took advantage of this yesterday. I knew I was gonna be getting in the vehicle after it was parked outside around 5 p.m., so I toggled it to turn on and set the climate to 72 by 5 p.m. I got in, the car was nice and cool. Electric car advantages there. Let's skip settings for now, we'll come back. We saw drive mode, here's your ambient lighting. I don't know why it wasn't in the other setting screen, maybe I missed over it, but there are some preset ones you can choose from here, or you hit custom, and go down to custom here, and you can change and customize your ambient lighting as a two-tone setup for the different parts of the vehicle, and you can adjust the brightness for the different settings or parts of the vehicle as well. So a lot of customization, I like that Volkswagen's doing that. I mean. They are LEDs, so why shouldn't they be customizable? And you can also just turn them all off right there if you want. Let's actually get a little bit more of a purple going here. That usually looks good on camera. We're gonna skip over seats and sound. We'll go to users. If you have multiple people in the household that drive the car, then you might wanna set up different users for them, save their radio presets, climate presets, and I think probably some seat settings as well. Although I do see buttons over here for seat memory, so perhaps the touchscreen can't operate that. I can't exactly let you know. Coming back in, we're gonna skip over Ida for now. We'll get to that here in a moment. You have the ability to see tips and help right there. Um, we've got a climate control screen, we already saw that. And so that's about all you need from there. So let's get into settings, see anything we missed. Under screen, mm -hmm. you can turn the screen tone on or off. We're gonna to get to that here in a moment. I think that's under sound actually. Oh no, right here, infotainment system touchscreen tone. So if you wanna hear those little beeps as you touch the, touch the screen, you don't want to have that on, but I like that off. Time and date, if you want to manually set your time, you can do that from there. Language, what do we have in here? English, Spanish, and French. No German, interestingly enough. The ability to customize which units you see things in. Voice assistant settings. What do we got in here? News feed. Okay. Dialogue tone. The start and end of dialogue. Oh, to make a little beep sound. Okay, all right, that's fair. You can adjust the volume there, there. Display the voice input, probably want that as well. Answer calls without the wake word, okay. This is an important option right here. If you do plan on selling your ID4, you're gonna wanna restore the factory settings of the vehicle to clear everything out for you. Maybe you just bought an ID4, you wanna clear it out as well. Under network, you have the ability to connect the system to a, a, a Wi-Fi network to download updates and etc. And you can use the infotainment system as a hotspot as well if you pay for it monthly power devices in the cabin, such as tablets or laptops. Under mobile devices, this is going to be how you pair or unpair different devices, maybe delete them from the car. We'll get to that later on. Information, nothing really important there. And then you actually have a configuration wizard. So this is gonna be if you first purchase the car, you wanna go in here and it'll set up a lot of things for you. That's nifty to have that right there. All right, let's dive into the voice commands now. But before we actually start them out, let's go to this IDA screen. So that's the name of the ID assistant. It'll show you different suggestions on things you can see and or th things you can Thanks. say. Red is definitely my color. What? Is that? Based on your current consumption, you will still be able to drive 215 miles. Oh, okay. Well, so those are things you can actually click on to see. There are a few different ways to activate it. If we turn this off, then uh, we can say hello Ida or hello ID with that on and that's gonna actually trigger the system or you can create your custom wake word. So if I do something like right here, tips for creating a wake word, three or more syllables, unique and not easily confused, speak clearly and concisely, sit as you normally would. Hey everybody. Okay, so now if I go, <clears throat> hey everybody, then it's, it uh, activates and, and I can do some voice commands. So we're obviously gonna delete that because we wouldn't want that activating every time I, I uh, start a, a video here in the car. But let's get into it right now. Let's do something like, hello ID, navigate to the nearest Starbucks. Oh, I still have to learn about that. What? That should be very straightforward. Here is an overview of the functions that you can operate by voice. Please pick one by saying the line or the function name. Okay, let's let's just cancel. Continue, press here, or activate ID. 
go go home. All right, let's try this again. You can also start the voice command with the steering wheel by pressing this button. Find the nearest Starbucks. I'm still puzzled. Why? That should be really straightforward. What about a charger? Where's the nearest charging station? Search for charging station in the vicinity. Please select a POI from the list. Okay, so it looks like it's picking some charge point and electrify America stations. Let's try search for Starbucks. I'm still puzzled. Man, so it, it can't do Starbucks. All right. Um, obviously, you could just put in a, a destination, like navigate to 1234 Main Street, Los Angeles, California. Did you mean 1234 South Main Street, Los Angeles? Yes. I found multiple alternatives for 1234. Please say the line number. Two. Line two. Okay, 1236 South Main Street, Los Angeles, California. Drive safely. So that's a pretty a pretty pleasant system. I'm just surprised it can't do the Starbucks thing that, that all the other cars can do, but overall it's, it is working pretty well. And uh, all right, let's just try canceling. Hey, hello ID. Hello ID. Cancel navigation. Stopping route guidance. Hello ID. Set the temperature to 62 degrees. All right, I'm setting the temperature to 62.0 degrees. 62.0, great. Uh, hello, ID. What's the weather like tomorrow? I'm still puzzled. All right, so I can't do weather. Um, let's try one more. Tell me a joke. What has four legs and can fly? Two birds. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny I like that all right so I, I when it does work I like the way the system works it, it responds well it's I like seeing the words up there it's got a pleasant sound to it it's just a few functionalities there I'm surprised it can't do so uh, now is the time we dive into Android Auto but it seems to have disconnected my Android Auto so we're gonna go into settings and mobile devices by reconnecting this. Oh, we have to turn. Oh, so turning off the Wi-Fi hotspot seems to have uh, turned off the Android Auto. Okay. There we go. Android Auto coming up wirelessly, taking up most of the screen, but we still have our hot toggle screens on the top and bottom. Nice split screen format here with the Google Maps on the left and YouTube Music on the right. Now, interestingly, it's in the nighttime setting, and it must be because we have the screen on the dark setting, which is fine. That's that's how I'd like it, but most cars don't do it that way. Here's our apps. Let's go down and bring up YouTube Music. Hit the super mix, see what we're getting. Some corn, okay. So we got that, and then if we go back home, then it gives us our music on the right. Nav on the left, let's bring up Google Maps full screen. This is how most people are probably going to be using navigation anyway. Look at that responsiveness. Works really well. Very nice refresh, pinch to zoom. Looking good. Now let's head on home, and we'll connect our iPhone. we got the iPhone right here. We're going to bring it into the settings screen. Go down to Bluetooth. And then the car, I'm going to bring up our app screen. Go to settings, network, mobile devices. And any moment here, it should pop up with iPhone, maybe. Oh, well, down here on the iPhone, I see. There we go. Charlie's iPhone. We're going to click right here to get Apple CarPlay to come up. And then anything that pops up on the phone or vehicle screen, I'm going to accept, pair. And there we have it. Apple CarPlay coming up, taking up the whole screen. Definitely a larger resolution than the Android Auto, so things look a little chunkier, for better or for worse, but we still have that split screen setup with navigation and media. Let's bring up YouTube Music first again. And once it loads, we'll hit the Super Mix, see what we're getting on the iPhone. Maybe no money. All right, so two different uh, artists here than we're usually getting. Coming back home, then you see you have your media on the right. 
Now on the left, this is what your app screen is going to look like. Again, really good refresh. I'm overall really happy with the screen. Let's go to our Google Maps. Bring it up full screen. Again, looking good, moving around. Cannot pinch to zoom, and it does look like our refresh is a little lower on the iPhone as well. But all things considered, working nicely, and bring it back home right there. So there we go, 12.9 inch touchscreen here on the Volkswagen ID4 for 2024. I like it decently. I, I think I like it better than the older system. It responds really, really well. I like the quality of the screen, the, the visuals. Like I said, a few different little quirks there, but overall a system that deserves to be spent time with and played around with so that you learn how to use it properly. If there's anything else I can answer, uh, try to ask it below and I'll try to get back to you. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.